What's up everyone? How's it going? You may have noticed that I've got a whole lot of jars set out behind me on that bench. They're all the cuts from last week's whiskey run and today I've got to figure out how to blend them back together. <laughs> Let's get stuck in. Welcome to Stiller everyone. This is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So if you dig it, if that's something you're into, have a look around and have a think about subscribing. All right team, so if you don't know what this is behind me, this is my bastard whiskey. It's kind of a scotch impersonation, I guess, or that's what I hope it'll be. If you didn't see the other two videos where I made the wash and where I did the spirit run for this, I'll put a card up top for a playlist which will have all of the videos for this whiskey in one spot. So I have to say team, I'm a little bit nervous about this one. This will be the first time I've ever blended anything coming off a pot still. And I can tell right away that it's gonna be a whole lot different than what the reflux run was. I think the first thing I wanna do is transfer a little bit of the information off the board from the run onto the paper towels underneath it. After that, I think what I wanna do is go down the line and just give everything a little bit of a sniff and kind of see where the rough idea of where the heads and hearts transition is and where the hearts and tails transition is. After that, I can get into actually tasting some stuff. I've got the heads to hearts transition happening somewhere between four and seven. I might use a little bit of six and then seven will be in, but we'll see what happens when I get into tasting. From about jar nine on, I'm starting to notice that sort of tailsy smell turn up. I, I guess I'll be blending less and less of each of these jars as we head down, unless I find something especially favorable in this area. And somewhere between sort of 19 to 23-ish is where it really starts to get manky and where I probably don't want anything from these jars anymore. It'll be around this area where I really start sort of assessing whether or not I even want to look at it. So I think it's pretty much time just to get stuck in and start tasting. But before I do, I just want to pass on a couple of the tips that I was given the last time that I did anything like this, which was blending back together my FFV. First up, I've got uh, four identical glasses and the idea is that I can mix up, it's still a bit wet, more than one jar at a time and taste them at, you know, next to each other, which is I think a really good idea. Two is I've made sure to get some really nice uh, filtered water, an accurate way to dispense that. I'm gonna be using my trusty bent spoon, which is, this one's four mils, to pull out of the sample jars. And I also have a nice big ass pot of warm water uh, to clean that spoon off every time because I don't wanna be contaminating the samples from one to the, one to the next. Last time it was also pointed out that I made the mistake of starting way up the top with jar number one and tasting that first, which probably effectively blew my taste buds out from the get-go. So the advice to fix that that I was given was to start right in the middle of where you think uh, your very best hearts are and slowly start moving up and down a little bit from there and sort of exploring further and further as you go. The reason you do that is you're kind of training yourself, you're training your palate as to what to expect and you're also sort of sampling things over a period of time to see if you missed anything but you're also not going way down into the funk and the tails or way up into the nail polish remover and the heads to really mess your senses up until you need to really get to that point and make a decision where that cut's going to be. I'm going to start with 8, 9 and 10 and we'll go from there. Oh, I also forgot to mention that my plan is to try and proof everything down to about 35%. So this has got a really um, almost like cut grass sort of aroma to it. Very little sweet or fruity flavors to it, which is interesting. Green banana or something like that. Like really green, not ripe at all banana. Plan is I'm going to move the jars sort of further away from me the more I like them. So once they go over the line it means I'm going to put something into the blend. Along that plane means that I'm going to use the whole jar and that's delicious. I'm definitely going to be using that. If there's any specific flavor that sort of jumps out I also want to note it down on the, um, the paper here. Wow that's got a really smooth lingering yeah really grainy sort of flavor to it. A touch of uh, butteriness too. Yeah I like that. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna go back towards the heads a little. So that's, this has got more of the green banana to it. Apricotty peachiness. 
So once again, very mellow. I can taste a little bit more of a punch to it. It's definitely not, not acetone or nail polish remover yet, so it'll be interesting to see where up here that starts to kick in. Yeah, it's a hard flavor to describe. It's a little bit like green banana, but it's also, um, maybe it's two flavors. Yeah, okay, actually there's two flavors there that I'm getting confused as one. One's like kind of that green banana sort of unripe fruit flavor, and the other is a grainy, flowery, like shortbread without the butter, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, but once again, I'm fairly certain I'm going to be putting that all in. So I'll, I'll set it back a little bit. All right, and back down to 10. Interesting, this is more full and rounded and buttery, actually. I think this flavor I've almost mistaken for alcohol burn before. It's not. It's, uh, um, it is kind of does have a mouthfeel to it, and it almost feels a little hot. It's more like having a whole lot of salt in your mouth than nail polish remover, if that makes sense. I'm not sure how to describe that. Yeah, it's also got butteriness, a little bit raisiny, I guess, flavor to it. So that's nice. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so it's still like nine better, but ten's um, pretty close as well. I just realized I'm not supposed to be swallowing any of this because, dude, look how, like, I've already drank, what, half a shot or something, and look how many of these I've got to get through. <laughs> Oh man. All right, I need to get a spit bucket. Don't worry, I won't show you, but uh, I would definitely advise not drinking this stuff because you'll get messed up quick and then you're gonna mess up your blending. <laughs> All right, team, I'm gonna keep on keeping on. I'm not gonna make you sit through, Jesus, what, 24 glasses of this. I'm gonna taste down towards the tails and then after that, I'm gonna come back up and taste this way a little bit. I'll catch up with you then and I'll give you an overview of sort of how I'm feeling about everything. So it looks like I have found my upper limit and my lower limit. As an overall, basically what's happening is this end is sort of the fruity raisin peach sort of area. But the further I go that way, the more prickly it gets to the point where it's just not worth it. Coming down into this area, it's sort of cut grass, earthy, grainy sort of notes. And as we move down here, that graininess turns into, I guess, more green banana sort of flavors. And then down this way, we start to get some funk from the tails, but we're also getting, like this jar here is kind of like a really fun, savory smoke flavor. So I think it's worth saving some of this here. I think what I want to do is just walk away for 20 minutes, half an hour. I'm going to go have some lunch. I'm going to go chill out for a little bit. I'm going to come back and make sure that I'm tasting sort of roughly the same things. And then, then I can look at getting into blending this back together. Oh, that's better. So I took a break, sat down, drank some water, had some food, and I've just come back and given everything a really quick smell and a couple of the problem ones a taste again. That flavor that I was trying to describe earlier has been really gnawing at me and I haven't been able to figure out why I can't place it. So, first of all, I figured I may as well have a look at a uh, commercial scotch and see if I can find that flavor in there. And it turns out I actually can. I've never noticed it in there before. So I decided to do a little bit more reading and looking around. A lot of people seem to say that they get uh, green banana young whiskies, whiskies that are too young, haven't been aged enough. I kind of wonder if it's one of those flavors that's gonna drop off. I also decided to put my nose in a jar of barley. That smell was not how I remembered it, which is interesting. And I can now pull that apart from the other smells that are in there. And I am getting a barley flavor in there. This is just steam flaked, it's not malted. But I can totally smell that, especially, where is it, around about here? Yeah, I, I can pick that up in there now, which sort of separates that green banana smell a little bit. And I think what I need to do now is just start blending, which is terrifying. Freaking terrifying. I'm gonna get stuck into it. What I wanna do is start with that core group that I know there's nothing wrong with, and then I'll probably go and pick a few of those other jars out and start adding little bits to them and tasting it and seeing how much of an impact positive flavors from those jars and the negative flavors from those jars are having on the overall uh, blend itself. And the reason I say that is it seems like, from what I've read and what I've heard people say, that the flavors in specific cuts or jars won't contribute uh, evenly compared on their volume. So you may put a little bit of something in it and it'll make a huge difference to the overall flavor or you'll put a lot of something else in and it won't really change the overall flavor. So I definitely want to include everything in this area and I guess I'll just, um, I'll get started on that first. Ooh, this is exciting. <laughs> I just put the paper towels there to make sure that I didn't grab anything by mistake. Yeah, I feel good about that. I've just taken a sample of just those, um, those safe hearts 
that I blended together. Definitely more complexity than I imagined there would be actually. Wow, wow, I'm actually kind of pleased with that. That tastes pretty good. The cut grass is coming through, I like that. There is a little bit of sweetness, a touch of sort of raisin, maybe like red apple, I guess. And you know what? Now I think I'm starting to see a little hint of that Belgian yeast in there. And it's not coming across as bananas. I know I was talking about green bananas, uh, but when I talk about the Belgian yeast, I mean like really ripe, almost um, bubblegum sort of flavor. Definitely a little bit of sort of clove and spice that could be coming from the yeast. Um, I'm not familiar enough with whiskey to know if that could be coming from anywhere else. Anyway, right now, I would say this is quite a pretty whiskey, or I think it will be after some aging especially. It's got no jagginess, no grunginess, it's got none of that um, punch at the back ends like you would expect from any sort of scotch that has smoke in it. So this is very pretty and I'm sure it would be nice, but I do want to try and delve a little more into the tails especially and pick up some of that sort of grungy, dirty, uh, smoky and uh, the spiky sort of notes. Not not spiky like nail polish remover, spiky like I was saying before, almost like salt. Oh, I don't know how to describe it. If you, guys know, if you guys know what I'm talking about and you know a better way to describe it, please let me know because I'm finding it hard with this one, I must admit. Anyway, I want to go looking a little bit more for some flavours. I can sense absolutely nothing offensive in that so I'm just gonna put that in too. Uh, 16 I really liked because it had a smooth sort of almost savory like a sweet smoke if you're talking in um, barbecue terms. 17 I'm a little bit dubious about because that mostly I couldn't taste anything except for alcohol and funk in it like the tails funk. Uh, 18 does have some funk but it's also got some really nice jaggy smokiness to it. 19 has this really awesome savory almost flavor to it almost umami like. I think could go quite well just a little bit and 20 definitely has some serious funk but it's also where I'm getting the most ashy really grungy campfirey sort of flavors to it and it's not strong but it's definitely there more on the uh, the flavor than the aroma I'm gonna add a little under half of each of these in there because it is a very small amount and I'm just gonna see how that affects it this is a sample from before I started adding some more of the tails in and this is after. It really hasn't given any funk in the nose which is really cool. It has given a little bit more of the um, the graininess actually which is weird. I thought the grains were sitting further up in the cup. Oh yeah okay. So now I'm starting to just be able to perceive some of that smoke, the ashtray but only only after I swallow and exhale. So that's really interesting. Okay I like that. I'm gonna put some more of the deep tails in. I'm gonna hold off on those middle ones for now. Yeah, so it was 19 and 20, uh, whatever. It's all going in, number 19. <laughs> and 20, I'm gonna hold off on a little bit. 18 had a bit of that smooth sort of rich smoke too, so I'll add a little more of that in. Okay, so still no, I'm still not getting a lot of funk, which is really cool. But I guess those jars really don't have a lot of it in it. I just, that's what I'm scared of getting in there. I don't want that toe jammy wet dog -ness. Okay, yeah, cool, a little bit more of that smoke in there, that's nice. Um, I got no problem dropping the rest of those jars in now. I think I'm done with the tails. Oh, 21, what do I have here? Yeah, yeah, I don't think there's anything worth salvaging in there. I think I'm just gonna leave it. It's time to mess with the jars closer to the heads. And I think what I wanna do is, uh, I'm just gonna take a little sip of this and I'm kinda using it as a reset for myself. Not because I think it's an amazing whiskey. I mean, it's nice and not for flavor, but for heat and spikiness. And the reason I wanna do that is, to me, this is, you know, it sits on the smoothish side of whiskey for me. I actually don't mind my scotch with a little bit of kick. It's not that I like the kick, it's just that I'm happy to trade it off if the whiskey that has the kick has a more, has more complexity or sort of flavor to it. Yeah, okay, so the Johnny Walker at the moment still has a lot more heat than mine does. I'm happy to sacrifice a little bit of smoothness for that flavor. So I am gonna look at the heads again as well. I think um, six is probably a fairly safe bet. Yeah, there's, I smell no heads in that whatsoever, actually now coming back to it. But it does have a beautiful raisiny scent to it, so that's all going in. Five is starting to get a little bit prickly, barely, and that is at, that's over 70%. So yeah, that's fine, that's going in too. Four is where the question really comes in. I wanna taste this again. I don't get a lot of the heads on the aroma, or on the nose, but it is starting to get a touch prickly on the tongue. It does have a beautiful flavor though. You know what, I'm gonna put half of this in now and then I'm gonna think about it later on. You know what guys, I tend to be really guilty of playing the uh, the more I do, the better it's gotta be, the more is more game. And I think, you know what, I think it's time for me to stop messing with this. I think I've done a decent job, I'm happy right now, and it is, at, it's pretty much 60, 60 ABV, which is perfect. That's right around where I wanted to age it on oak. 
So what I'm going to do is throw all of the stuff at the top and the bottom into a faints jar. I'm going to put the jars that I was messing with and putting a little bit in here and there. I'm going to put them onto their own jar in case I want to do something with them later, seeing as they're not horrible. And then I'm going to get this packaged up and ready to sort out with oak. This one was a little nerve wracking for me, but uh, I gotta say I'm pretty happy with how it's worked out so far. Can't wait to get it onto Oak. Have an awesome rest of your week, guys. Thanks for hanging out. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you really liked it, and you wanna see more content like this, have a think about hitting the subscribe button down below. I'll catch you guys next week. See ya.